everybody, welcome to the latest episode of Toy Guys Talking. I I'm beaming. I'm absolutely beaming. I can't believe this. I'm talking to Lion-O, Lord of the Thundercats. Mr. Kenny, thank you so much for your time tonight. This is just uh, a huge honor for me. Uh, Thundercats has a very special place in my heart. I used to wake up at uh, 6.30 in the morning when my mom was getting ready for her factory job. And as she was getting ready for the day to take care of the family, before she went to work at the factory, Thundercats was on TV. And uh, I just can't say enough about Thundercats and and your portrayal as lion -O. So, it, you know, to me, it's like talking to Peter Cullen. Um, I just, I, I'm so appreciative that uh, you're taking the time to chat with me and and all the folks who watch my channel. Uh, this guy, did you see that cat-like reflex as he was trying to leap off my uh, <laughs> desk? I noticed that. I noticed that. Listen, um, Michael, I'm sorry to interrupt you if, if you weren't finished, but I, I, I just want to tell you that, uh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I, I feel akin to you now because you, what you just said. My father and my grandmother worked in factories. Mm -hmm. And I knew the, the hours and the, you know, the early mornings. And anyway, so yeah. we're on the same keel here. 12, 12 hour days, mom and dad, me too, for a while there. Uh, you know, when people say, Hey, you're living the dream. And I go, yeah, maybe if I do this for 20 years, I'll have some sort of balance. Uh, but one of the questions I want to ask you, cause I talked to Bud, buddy, uh, Bob, I always do that. Bob buddy Ansky, uh, the writer <laughs> of uh, transformers comic on Marvel. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, you know, I, I love learning about the other generations of toys and stuff. Did you grow up on any toys? Do you have any favorite toys? Uh, you know, childhood? That's a very good question. I've never been asked that question, which makes it a great question. Um, uh, I I don't recall. First of all, collecting was not as big, of course, as it is now. Yeah. Uh, and we had, we had toys, of course. Uh, but the whole um, action figure thing. See, I grew up in the 50s. And so I think the closest thing that came to action figures back then was probably... Um, like like you, you, my grandmother bought me one time a, 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 a cowboy suit hop along cassidy suit with the hat and the two guns and all that you know that that's what made me feel like a superhero back then uh but i think you know the real uh toy collecting and saving and all that started in the 80s with thundercats and he-man and all those all those great shows um, I read a story on your IMDb uh, that I wanted to bring up. Uh, you read a Toys R Us, I believe it was, and you saw some kids uh, <clears throat> humming and on over which action figure to buy, and uh, you went up to them and <laughs> you suggested one in particular. Yeah, it's a, it's a great story, and, and fortunately, it's true because it's, uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful story. I think uh, I was at, at Toys R Us shopping about two weeks before Christmas, back in probably after the Thundercats had been on the air for. <clears throat> nine months or a year mm -hmm. and uh, the, the previous time i had been there uh i noticed that there was a whole aisle of thundercats figures and toys and everything and so i knew that hey the show's doing well now you know yeah this pretty that, that had been a couple of years before probably and this time i walked in the store and there are three aisles both sides and nothing but thundercats toys and action figures and books and lunch boxes and things like that and i said oh man we got a hit on our hands, you know, that's when we really knew. So uh, as I walked toward the place, I walked, walked down the first aisle and there are two young fellows, maybe seven to 10 or 11. And they're standing in front of the action figures. And one of them says, I'm going to get Panthro. He said, yeah, Panthro. He's the coolest one, uh, Thundercat. Well, Earl Hyman was pretty. He was pretty yes, he cool. was. He <laughs> was. Earl was cool. So it was Panthro. And uh, the other kid said something like, uh, no, I'm going to get Tigra because he's the best, you know, and, and uh, I couldn't help myself. I walked over. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Uh, why don't you get Lionel? You know, he's the one who says, <clears throat> Sword of Omens, come to my hand. I, Lionel, command it. And they both looked up at me like, who is this old perv? <laughs> <laughs> No, I realized my, you know, okay, I'm sorry. So I started walking away. And I heard one of them behind me said to the other one, he didn't even sound like Lionel. <laughs> oh, my I, God. It's true. I, like, it, to make the story even better is uh, if employees were dragging you out while you were screaming, thunder, thunder, thunder. <laughs> Their mothers came running over. Get away from my boy. 
So you uh, you didn't start off in uh, acting and performing um, radio DJ, right? That's that's yeah. what you did mostly before voice acting. Yeah, I did. I started in uh, as a disc jockey on radio um, about two weeks before my 16th birthday back in, in my hometown in Illinois. And um, <clears throat> then I, you know, th th as, a, as a weekend guy, you know, and then I moved on up, finally had my own show there. And then uh, I moved after that up to Fort Wayne, Indiana, to um, <clears throat> Cleveland, oh, still in radio the whole time, mm -hmm. Cleveland, um, Chicago, and then finally New York, where I've been for... Um, Mm, 40 over 40 years and um so that's i did that for a long time and after i stopped doing my own show a radio show i joined uh imus in the morning if you've heard of him or listened to him or watched him on tv and i was with the, a member of the cast of his show for 35 years up until okay 2008 so yeah i've done a lot of radio yeah uh, what what drew you to thundercats were you just auditioning for everything in sight or was there something in particular <laughs> Yeah, well, you you know, in, in this business, the voiceover business, you when your agent calls you and says, "Go, go audition for this," and you go audition for that, you know. Did and, you audition uh, just for Lionel or or all the characters? Because I noticed your star sign; it just jumped at me. Leo, how perfect is that? Yeah. You're a Leo, and you played the yeah. Lord of the Thundercats. Yeah, I thought it was kind of neat too. That I I don't think it occurred to me the, the day of the audition, but <clears throat> that, is, that is a cool deal. No, they asked you uh, when you went into audition. Um, uh, we, we want you to audition for uh, one Thundercat and one uh, Mutants, you know, Mom Ross bad guys. Yeah. So they had each of us do that. So uh, I did. I decided. I think I'll I'll try for Lionel. He's he's the boss. He's the Lord of the Thundercats. You know, might as might yeah. as well be him. If I won't be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I read for him, and then I, I I they had the drawings of all the characters up around the wall. You know, with a little synopsis underneath. Uh, the picture of, of uh, what they were about and their history was and things like that. So uh, something drew me to this, this jackal, which is to a young guy from Illinois. I think it means like a wolf, but sneakier and nastier. I always picture them as, you know, kind of, well, in fact, I, I think I channeled, I know I did. I channeled when I saw that, I uh, saw that picture. Uh, my mind flashed back to uh, one of my favorite, probably my favorite uh, all time, uh, animated show when I was a kid, Rocky and Bullwinkle. If you're familiar with Rocky and Bullwinkle, yeah. there, there was a uh, a great character named Snidely Whiplash. He was the ultimate uh, bad guy, villain, the ultimate villain at the time. He had the stovetop hat, you know, and the cape wrapped around him, all black, and the mustache like this. And he yeah. used to say things like, uh, I'm going to get you, Nell, and tie you to the railroad track. <laughs> So I thought that voice might go good with this. So that's how that's why, how I auditioned for it, and and uh, fortunately I got that role too. And then of course, uh, as we recorded uh, 130 episodes, uh, more new characters came up that we all had to, had to, you know, audition for briefly and like that. We, there were only five of us in the cast. And yeah. Over, yeah. Over all those episodes, there were probably a couple hundred characters. So we split them all up. I've actually been re-watching some episodes of Thundercats, and now that I've uh, I watched some Transformers and G.I. Joe from time to time, especially the, the clip mining that I do for some of my reviews, but of all the cartoons I grew up in in the 80s, I got to say Thundercats is definitely the one that still uh, holds up, and, and you can watch because it has continuity. It actually has character mm -hmm. development. One episode ends, and the next one picks up where the last one ends off. A lot of them were made to be aired out of order for syndication mm -hmm. but why do you know why thundercats was this uh, exception why rankin bass decided this is the one that's actually going to be a legend that unfolds i do not uh, i mean i never had the opportunity to discuss those kinds of things with the uh, <clears throat> with the uh, arthur or um uh Jules Bass, Arthur Rankin or Jules Bass. I, I only met those guys a couple of times and when they came to New York uh, and we went out to dinner together or something like that. So no, I, I don't know uh, why that was, but it was not the only thing that was um, different about, uh, about Thundercats. Thundercats uh, originated, or came about because uh, for a while, uh, people were starting to get upset about children's television. In fact, there's a woman who started a, a really big campaign that grew into millions and millions of people uh, who would who would um, uh, kind of monitor 
children's television in general, mostly cartoons and things like that. Their concerns were, uh, you're just selling the kids cereal, just selling the kids toys, things like that. Yeah. The, lang the language on some of the shows, you know, and the ideas. So uh, Rankin Bass agreed with a lot of that, apparently, because uh, the, the show, they were the first cartoon show, I think, to hire um, professional uh, well, psychi psychologists, child psychologists, and people like that, who would, who would read every script and, and suggest things that this is not good for children to hear or, or why don't you try it a different way or something like that. And that's, that shows you what they, uh, you know, what the uh, what Rankin and Bass, how they perceived what was happening uh, in the market and said, let's, let's try to change that and make a show where the heroes are a little bit different. They're not, not some, fighting all the time. They try, you know, the Thundercats always try first to, to, uh, uh, talk with the mutants or whoever and you know convince them to go down the right path if you will yeah. uh, and then and then if we had to we could kick ass you know yeah. but the first, <laughs> yeah, first inclination was always to settle it like uh, like gentlemen and ladies yeah that's what i really appreciated about it the code of thundera truth justice mm -hmm. honor loyalty and whenever i'm uh recommending old cartoons to folks with young kids i say you gotta check out brave star because it's like he-man but more polished and some yes. really, really good lessons that hit home and Thundercats because mm -hmm. uh, Thundercats is especially great because a lot of the other heroes are already done. The mold is is cast and their Optimus Prime doesn't change from first episode to last. He-Man mm -hmm. doesn't either. Bravestar doesn't really either. But Lionel, what's, what's really fascinating, and I, I didn't do very good framing here. Um, I've actually got the Lord of the Thundercats right here uh, beside me. As well as one oh, of your other characters, which I wanted to ask you about, because my favorite character from Silverhawks. But uh, Lionel starts out as a, a little cub, and uh, yeah, nice. as it goes on, he, um, you know, he learns more and more uh, about mm -hmm. what it is to be a hero. And what I really appreciated about the episodes that I've been watching recently is that he's not insufferable. A lot of movies and shows that try to give you that young, sought, sought-off punk who uh, develops. Yeah is just so insufferable. Anakin Skywalker is going to come to a lot of people's minds. But lion -O pushes back a little, but then always, you're right, Tigra, or <laughs> yes, yes, Panther. He, he's so humble that mm. he knows good advice when he hears it. And that's what I really appreciated about the character of lion -O, to see an actual, one of the ultimate heroes just become that ultimate hero before our eyes. That's, I, I like that. I like, I've always, always like that too. Pardon me. <clears throat> And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, he, st he starts out as a, a cub, a small child, if you will. And even after, you know, years, he's, he's growing into, first of all, he, he's, he becomes Lord of the Thundercats still at a very young age. And, uh, and he's has, he has all this responsibility thrust upon him, you know, when Claudius dies, his father dies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recall him in, in many episodes being unsure in fact, he, even being unsure if he if he were worthy of you know of, of being the title of Lord of the Thundercats and and having possession and control of the Sword of Omens, um, and and he we we all watched him grow, you know, as the series as the series grew. And what's really effective about it is he doesn't just grow by kicking butt and beating all the bad guys. He yeah. actually defeats his own uh his own thundercats in the uh the anointment trials where he has to defeat panthro at panthro specialty and and i, I still scratch my head at how did he beat chitara at a race but he actually did it and, and those are important life lessons for kids to you really want to know you really want to know yeah <laughs> he tripped her <laughs> i'm sorry you're being very serious and i'm sorry but yeah uh in, in fact right that that is exactly when the he gained the respect from all the other Thundercats that he desperately right. wanted and would need to, to have them follow him. Um, so one thing I've always wondered, because Rankin Bass, they did Thundercats, they also did Silverhawks. Was yeah. that, um, well, we've hired you for one thing, so it's a package deal. Now you're going to be doing voices for this other show, or did you have to separately audition for uh, the Silverhawks show? Uh, we did not actually have to audition. They used, they, they did, as you say, use the same cast, basically, almost entirely for not only Thundercats and Silverhawks, but also Tiger Sharks, another show we did. Mm -hmm. And then we did a um, Saturday morning show on ABC called Comic Strip, 
which is two, it was a two hour show consisting of four 15 minute mini shows, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. mini -month, the name of one of those shows and Karate Cat, and I forget the, forget the other ones. Um, uh, while they, while for Thundercats, their first one, Rankin Bass, Bass's first um, uh, cartoon, not their first cartoon ever, for people who don't know, uh, Lord uh, Rankin Bass made some of the best cartoons of, of my childhood. Um, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, yeah. Frosty the Snowman with Burl Ives, you know. And so when I got first uh, heard about the chance to audition for a Rankin Bass production, I was I was excited but nervous with pressure, you know. I, you know, it's a lot to live up to. Mm -hmm. um, but getting back to the cast, as you asked me, uh, we did not audition for uh, Silverhawks or the, anything anything following that because they knew all of our uh, the talent we all had, you know, what our strengths were and weaknesses, I guess. Uh, because as I said, um, during the course of recording all 130 episodes of Thundercats, we each did, oh, maybe 100 voices, maybe not that many, but... Any voice you hear on Thundercats for that entire series is one of us, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think they knew, who, you know, how are we going to get a better cast than that for anything yeah. else? So, so they, um, you know, they did. I, now that I'm trying to think, remember more carefully, uh, we didn't have to to um, to audition overall. In other words, we didn't have to uh, pass an audition to get on the show, so Silverhawks and the other shows. They would come in and you, you can call it an audition, but amongst us all, we'd sit there and say, what would you do for this character? You know, we knew one of us was going to do the character, but we'd all kind of say, yeah, I think that sounds good for this guy. Did you have a choice of bluegrass or did they decide who was going to play who? Again, I think it was just we were all sitting around for the first time, <clears throat> those of us who were in the cast with the producers and started reading reading scripts and um, for... for um, one page I would play bluegrass and for another page. And then he just decided at the end, okay, we liked Larry as bluegrass better. We liked uh, Bob McFadden as commander stargazer, whatever, you know? So uh, it wasn't really an audition. We all knew we had the job. Hmm. So um, I want to go back to Thundercats just for a second. What, uh, what inspired you? What uh, did you draw from for that voice? Which um, one? For lion -O. Lion those voices, basically just my voice. I didn't really have to come up with a voice. I'm noticing uh, that right now. It's pretty yeah. surreal. <laughs> well, it's a little more raspy now than it was back then, but it's basically my voice. I always tell people if you listen to Lionel, uh, and then and then listen to me talk, most people hear that, you know, people are always saying, Are you the voice of Lionel? But <laughs> the difference is when I'm talking with you right now, I'm I'm saying things like uh uh, sword of Omens, come to my hand, I lie and oh, command it, you know. On screen, mm -hmm. it's Sword of Omens, come to my hand. I have a more power than that. That's all. But basically, it's, it's just my voice. Same with all the characters, all, all of the Thundercats. Um, uh, well, not Panthro's voice was actually um, Earl Hyman's voice, more exaggerated. Earl Hyman played... Uh, uh, Bill Cosby's Cosby show. father on yeah. the Cosby show, yeah. Yeah. So you could, you know, at times when he would yell, he sounded like that, you know. And that's basically what um, Panzer was. Yeah. But it was all just basically our voices. Now for the for the um, mutants, I've showed you what, how I come up came up with the voice for for Jackal Man. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't have to I didn't have to invent a, a voice for that. What about bluegrass? I mean, it, it was pretty <laughs> much a given. He's a cowboy, right? So that's right, kid. Yeah. <laughs> give it a little bit of southern drawl yeah. um and then the, they uh they had you back on that amazing 2011 thundercats reboot which yeah. is just one of the best reboots i've ever seen because it it gets the heart the spirit of the original thundercats to yeah. at all they yeah. changed with the costumes everything else is absolutely the same yeah. uh so what was it like working on the new thundercats as lionel's father claudus yeah. well first of all it was it was a such a um, I enjoyed the fact that they were hiring me to do uh, Claudius. Not only it was not a, just an homage to me, but to the uh, the other guys in the, uh, the original cast and to uh, the producers of the original cast, which, which was also uh, the original show, which was also rank, uh, Rankin and Bass. Uh, but an homage to the fans of the first of the first series, the original series, because the um, the, the people who did it uh, from Warner Brothers. I met with them all before. 
you know, we, we did the show. And the first thing uh, I learned was that every, everyone who worked on that show had been huge fans of the original, the original series. And they all promised us, we're, you know, it's, it's going to be the same people, the same, the same characters going to be the same. Uh, it's just a new, you know, uh, new look and stuff like that. But they promised me, or, I mean, they made me know that they're going to stay true to the, the core beliefs, if you will, the, uh, the Code of Thundera. And I, I believe they did. They even, they even had little, little, little pieces of uh, hints of uh, the old show, if you recall, little references. Yeah. To, you know, and uh, There's people. one really wonderful, ambiguous part where Mumra is so similar to how he was on the original show. Everyone else mm. has a new outfit, pretty much. But Mumra is so true to the original one. I kind of wonder, is this the same Mumra? And he's just kind of waited out another thousand uh -huh. years. And this is just kind of life, you know, Battlestar Galactica, life re re repeating itself. And it's kind of a cool tie into the original show. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It, it's, uh, I, th I thought they did that. Uh, great job on that series. The, the 2011 series. Um, I loved it. And then they had yeah. you on Thundercats Roar, which I haven't gotten around to watching yet for, you know, it, it looks so different. But uh, what did you think of Thundercats Roar? Well, it was different. Um, I, I think I think the same thing that most people thought of it. And, um, well, the fact that it's not on the air anymore, it's only, it only lasted a few episodes, I think. It just mm -hmm. didn't click with the, with the, the public. Mm -hmm. And you never know what they're going to. You know, when we when we did the original Thundercat series, um, we didn't all go, ah, we're all going to be on a legendary series that we'll be talking about yeah. 30 years from now, you know, and they'll be selling little figures and they might be going to Comic Cons and all. Who knows? In this business, you never know what's going to be uh, be good. I mean, be, be uh, a hit, be liked by a lot of people, no matter how good it is, because there, there are so many different factors that come into the popularity of, of things, how it's promoted. Um, and no one could have foreseen voice actors basically being the stars of the conventions, you know, like it, the, the voice actors are, are the main attraction, just as big as a William Shatner or, or any other live action actor these days. But you, you have the convenience of not being recognized at the uh, grocery store. Maybe someone going, Hey, count Chocula. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. They bother me too much. <laughs> what was uh, do you do you remember? I know there's it's harder, you know, you don't always stop and go, well, this is my memory of this event and I'm always going to remember it. But do you remember seeing your first Lino figure? It wasn't this one. It was uh, I've got the binge, binge one over there, but seeing the Thundercats figures on the uh, on the pegs at a toy store and and going, that's me. What was that like? <laughs> well, I always try to uh it, it was it was exciting. It was very exciting uh, because it showed you the, the degree of popularity the show has that they're making a little figure that people are buying, you know. And and I, I love the fact that it was me who did the voice of that character. But um, if I ever got close to the point of thinking, I know you were kidding, but thinking that's me in there, that's <laughs> then I think I would have sought help. <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna ask you there's been uh rumors about uh new thundercats uh coming back the uh, director of godzilla versus kong uh looks like he might be the one to do it and so i was wondering what you think you're gonna look like in cat makeup and spandex when uh, <laughs> they come calling to reprise your role as lino well i still have the spandex outfit <laughs> but it's not a pretty picture when i try to put it on no, I uh, <clears throat> first of all, I'm just excited as hell that, that, that he's gonna they're gonna make another movie. I mean, I'm all for the Thundercats franchise, you know, whether I'm on it or 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 whatever. Uh, I have I have such fond feelings of, of of the franchise. We call you know the franchise, you know, we call it that, but I mean, of all the series and and um, all the reincarnations of it. Um, so I'm just proud to be a part of it. You know, it, it means a lot to me. Uh, I'm pausing to figure out how to actually word this, but all my, uh, ever since uh, the original Thundercat series was on the air, I would get fan mail, of course, much, much more fan mail in the last uh, 20 years because of the internet, of course, you know. Um, but I've always gotten mails and uh, mail and emails from people who would tell me that um, 
in various ways that they didn't have a very good childhood. And I, I knew pretty much what they were talking about, you know, they being abused or, or lonely or whatever. And uh, so many people have told me that when, when they went into their bedroom and watched it for half an hour while they're watching Thundercats or Silverhawks, that all that went away. And they actually come to the Comic Cons and people tearfully thank me for being that part of their childhood. So that means a lot to me. I don't just consider it, uh, hey, I'm a guy who was on a, on a big you know, cartoon show. I played the big character in the cartoon show. Um, I keep in mind all the time what these kids have told, these people have told me. And, and I, I'm very protective of that legacy. I'm so happy to hear that. And uh, I'm so happy to have been able to talk to you today. Um, Peter God. Cullen, Michael Bell, John Irwin, Larry Kenny. The reason these characters, I consider them the ultimate hero, is because I always say the voice actor has poured something of themselves, of their spirit, into the character. I, I don't believe there are some voice actors who just read the script and you get what you get. But I think there are some voice actors who give something of themselves, pour it into the character. And that's why when you hear it, you don't just hear it, you feel it. And, uh, um, you know, they say never meet your heroes. And I'm always cautious whenever I approach to speaking to anyone, uh, whether per, uh, performer or writer, because it can kind of skew your view of the yeah. thing afterward. And then you have to do the compartmentalizing. Well, I love the character, but the dude, not so much. But um, I'm just I'm so happy to see that you are everything that Lionel was and everything that I sensed from the character. It wasn't just a vocal performance. It was, I think that is you. I, th I think you lived it, you live it, you are it. And uh, I, I'm just very, very happy to, uh, to, to have, you know, been able to chat with you today and see that. Can we quit before you make me cry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's so kind of you to say, Michael, that, that touches me very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for everything, Mr. Kenny. Thanks for talking with me today and with uh, with the tribe watching along. Um, thank you for everything. And it, it, is there anything uh, that you'd like to share that uh, you're working on? Anything you'd like to? Uh, to uh, well, I'm still doing commercials. Um, uh, in fact, just yesterday I did a couple. Of, uh, Friday I did a couple of new commercials for Skittles. You know, Skittles candy. Yeah. I'm the guy at the end of all those. It says, "Feel the rainbow, taste the rainbow." <laughs> Awesome. Doing that for 25 years. Um, Comic Cons. I'm I just just got home last night from a Comic Con in Nashville, and uh, May 21st to 23rd, I'll be at Pensacon in Pensacola, Florida. Love to have you come out and you know we can chat and who knows what else. Have a good awesome. Time. I'll include a link to that in the show notes here for people to right. uh, to find thank out you. more about that. And again, Mr. Kenny, thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm going to go back to watching my, my Thundercats. I, I keep meaning to watch the whole run. I got the whole DVD set yeah. and then I keep getting sidetracked, but I'm on a, I'm on a good roll now and it's, I just love the continuity and, uh, and then it'll be, I guess, Silverhawks after that. Bluegrass is my favorite. Silverhawks. Michael, but, uh, thank you. And if I can take just another second to thank, uh, everybody watching, uh, and for, for being fans of the show and, and it, it's, um, if it weren't for all of you people, you know, obviously it's a dumb old saying, but. Uh, if it weren't for the fans, you know, most of us voice actors would still be washing cars or something. So, <laughs> I mean it sincerely. Thank you. Much appreciated, sir. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed Nerd Miss Day. Ho! Oh! <laughs> line. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, eh? Thunder! 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 Thunder catch! Oh!